This is the full pint streamer. This articulated fly is going to be about three and a half inches when it's all done. And it's a good one. This is a B10S, uh, number four on the back, and uh, number two up front. Gonna bring in 10 marabou here for the tail. Uh, I used two plumes on this because both plumes were a little sparse, and I do not want a sparse tail. Uh, I like to lash the butt ends of the marabou to the hook shank because it fills out the underbody just a little bit. Um, importantly, I do not add flash to the tail of this fly. No crystal flash, no flash abu. You certainly could, I just seem to do better without it. There's enough flash with the bead and the cone and the dubbing that we're going to use next. This is a dry fly dubbing. It's a hairline, super fine, sulfur orange. It has a really great subtle sparkle to it. Um, I've been using this dubbing on other streamer patterns for years and it's just something I have a lot of confidence in. So what we're doing with the dubbing here, for the back third of the hook, this is making up the body. Uh, we'll spiral this forward, but the majority of this is going to be underneath the feathers. And here is the feather. It's a mallard flank. We're going to use it in natural color and in wood duck dyed color. So you can see that I stripped the fluff from the base of the feather, and so I can hold the stem. Um, importantly here, we are not yet going to palmer in full feather. We're taking pieces of feathers, clumps of feathers, and tying them in on a hook. Pinch them in, a couple solid wraps, pull it back, a wrap in front, clip it off. Then grab another clump and do the same thing. You're going to pinch in pieces all the way around the hook. Uh, importantly here, we're not palmer in the feathers, not on the back half. If we did that, the length of those feathers would overtake the tail. Uh, it takes about four or five clumps to get all the way around the hook. When I get to the underside, uh, the bottom side of the hook, I use the natural color feathers, the white, the natural mallard flank. Again, I'm just pinching in pieces and tying them in. So it might take a dozen or more clumps tied in uh, to work your way to about the middle of the hook shank where you can then start to use full feathers palmered. Um, I take the feather and pull it back exposing just the tip because that's how I'm going to tie it in. Here I'm grabbing the tip and then I'm going to clip it off with the scissors tie in just that small piece right there, right against the hook shank, and now I can palmer this feather. Now as I wrap, I'll try to keep the shiny side of the feather faced forward, but it's really not that critical, because in the end here we're going to brush all this together, and the river does the rest. I'm going to tie this off nice and tight, um, and then a few wraps in front, and clip it off. For the last feather, I'll reach for the white natural color again. Go through the same process, tie it into the tip, and palmer it forward. You really want to be careful not to crowd the eye, but get in a few good wraps. You can usually use the whole feather. And then you'll tie it down tight and whip finish.
So that's half of it. That's the back half of your full pint streamer. You want to take this out of the vise and set it aside for a little while. Put in a number two B10S with a large copper cone head. I like to use lead wire, about 15 wraps of 0.025. It's going to fill up the front half of the shank and help me create a taper. And with this, I don't need glue or anything else to hold the lead in place and to build a real nice taper. Uh, I can do it very quickly uh, with a thick thread. Now bring in the back half. It's strung up on 19 strand beetle on wire with a red orange acrylic bead. It's real important to get the distance between the two hooks just right. You want enough space to allow for movement, but with too much space, the back hook catches the front hook too often. I'm still using the thicker thread here, the 210, and it's really all I need to anchor in this articulation point. I'm going to lash down the wire and then separate the two strands eventually and pull on one side to the far side of the hook, the other side to the near side of the hook and again use the thick thread to quickly build a taper and even everything up. I'm going to come in here with an old pair of scissors and I'm using the back of the scissors jaws to cut the wire. Here I like to add just a little bit of marabou again. There's not much here, and what I have, I'm going to let it sort of drift around the hook shank. So I have a piece of marabou that sort of fills in the space around the bead. And now it's time for the dubbing again. Um, I'll dub about half of the hook. And that's where I'll start pinching in pieces of mallard flank, clumps of mallard flank again, just like we did on the first hook. And once you fill up the back half of this shank with pinched in pieces, then you can start using full feathers again and palmering them forward. Here I'll alternate between the wood duck color and the natural white color. It just gives it that mottled effect that makes this pattern so effective. And when you get to the cone head, it's time to use dubbing to fill in some space. On top of that dubbing, you will add another feather. You'll probably need multiple feathers in this section, and I like to alternate colors. Build up the section just behind the collar with a little bit more dubbing. And then for the last section, you're going to pinch in clumps to finish the fly. This will take about five or six clumps to get all the way around the fly. Um, when I get to the bottom, um, I'll go ahead and use the natural color. And for the sides and the top, I uh, use the wood duck color. One last time you're going to use dubbing and build up a collar behind the cone head to finish the fly. A couple wraps and a solid whip finish and this is your full pint streamer. Uh, be sure to find the companion article for the full pint and his little brother the half pint streamer at troutbitten.com. There's a link in the description below. And 
if you like this video, you can help out Trout Pitten by hitting the subscribe button. So, fish the full pint streamer with confidence. I promise it catches trout.